Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Meredith Farley. I'm a registered early childhood educator and a professional practice analyst at the College of Early Childhood Educators. I'm glad you're here. On behalf of myself and everyone at the college, we hope you and your families are doing well at this time. Thank you for joining me to discuss continuous professional learning. There are some updates um, related to continuous professional learning as a result of COVID-19. So we know that ongoing learning is important and it's also highly valued by the profession. However, the college understands that completing the required CPL activities may not be entirely possible for you at this moment. So starting in April 2020 to August 2021, you will have the option for a one year deferral of your CPL requirements as a result of COVID-19. Um, the option to defer your CPL requirements due to the pandemic will be included in your membership renewal. There you'll be given an option where you can select to defer the option only once, or you can continue on with your continuous professional learning as well. Um, to help you understand the deferral options and the processes, we've created a chart. I'm going to be highlighting that chart later in the presentation, but I also wanted to let you know that it is, is available on our website for your information. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. So I do want to point out that if you require a deferral for your CPL for any reason outside of COVID-19, such as a parental leave or sick leave, you can submit a CPL deferral form. And that has always been the process. You can find that form on our website under the form section, and then you can fill it in and send it into the college for a review. <clears throat> While the college is not physically open, all of our staff are working remotely to support you in a number of different ways. Um, with respect to CPL, we're here to respond to your questions about the program. We're producing and sharing CPL practice resources, hosting webinars like this one with information and updates about the CPL program. We're continuing to provide the option to confirm compliance with CPL because we know that there are members that are able to get engaged in continuous professional learning at this time. So let's start the presentation. So the purpose of CPL, continuous professional learning. Um, it's a part of the culture of the profession to engage in ongoing learning. ECEs are learning every day. The process of CPL PL is a way to document the ongoing learning that you are already doing. Um, it, you reflect on your practice, which allows you to plan for and engage in uh, professional self-directed learning activities that are linked to the code and standards of your profession. There are a couple of resources highlighted on this slide. One is the Code of Ethics and Standards of Practice, and another is a useful resource that can support you in any questions that you might have around continuous professional learning, and that is called the Notice of Continuous Professional Learning Program Requirements. So keep both of those handy as you're going through the process of your ongoing learning. So there's two steps to this process. Uh, step one is a one-time module. It's called the Expectations for Practice module. And once you become a member, you have an entire year to complete this module, which is found on our website. It is free of charge. It takes members about 90 minutes to complete. You can pause it, come back to it. It just gets you thinking about the role of the college and highlighting different information for you. At the end, it will generate a certificate, which you'll keep um, in case you are required to provide that information if audited. The second step is the continuous professional learning cycle, which is this handbook that's highlighted on the slide. Um, and I'll go into some of the components in the next slide. Here are the three required CPL components that are found within the handbook. And I just wanted to state that the handbook is mailed to first time, um, when it's your first time to go through the process. But the college is considered uh, minimizing um, shared materials at this time. And so in an e-blast, if it's your renewal month and you're expecting a handbook in the mail, you will have the option to request a handbook or you can download it from our website. There you can print it, you can save the PDF version, it can be filled out and saved on your computer if you'd like to work on it that way. 
It also has an identical version that is in Word. So you can choose to work and use the CPL handbook um, in any way that works for you. Uh, and there are three required processes, components. The first is the self-assessment tool. That gets you to think about your practice, some of the areas of challenges, some of the interests that you might have. It gets you to review the, each of the standards of practice and gets you thinking about your um, profession and where you wanna go as a professional. Um, once you've completed the self-assessment tool, you generate three goals for yourself. And once the goals are completed, you're gonna start thinking about the second piece, which is the blue one in the middle, and that's the professional learning plan. So to complete your goals, you're going to think about things that you'd like to engage in to, to, to learn. Um, the learning activities are completely self-directed. They are generated from you, your interests, what kind of learner you are, um, the time of day that you like to engage in learning. You get to choose and you get to set the direction of your learning by choosing or creating your own learning activities. I'm gonna to go to a slide a little bit later in the presentation, which highlights some of those. The last component is the record of professional learning, which is where you're going to document, reflect on the learning, think about how it's impacted your practice, how it's benefiting you as a professional, and perhaps the children, families, and colleagues that you work with in your practice setting. Um, and I'll go to a little bit of a slide in more detail about how you document your learning as well. So those are the three required components that are within the handbook. So as the name suggests, it's a CPL portfolio cycle and it's continuous. Continuous professional learning means that once you've completed year one and year two of your first cycle, you will start a new cycle and begin again with year one and year two. If you've chosen to use the hard copy or the handbook for your first year one and year two, for your first complete cycle, you might have learned like I did that you wanted to work online. I did mine um, with paper and pen the first time and discovered that there were easier ways to do it for me. And I've downloaded a PDF version from the website, saved it to my computer, always checking that it's saved to the cloud or USB so I don't lose any of my important work. But definitely learn as we go about how to do things differently or more efficiently the next time. Okay, so see, here are some CPL portfolio examples. There's three ECEs here that are highlighted and each of them are at a different stage of their portfolio cycle. So Claire has just finished her first year of membership. She's completed her expectations for practice module and now it's time for her to start her CPL portfolio cycle. So when she got the e-blast, she requested that yes, she would like to receive a copy in the mail. Mark has just finished year one of his CPL portfolio cycle and he's getting ready to review his first year and begin thinking about his second year and what that might look like. Marianne just finished her first entire cycle. Congratulations, Marianne. It's quite a feat to finish your first one. And I often find in talking to members that the second cycle is a little easier because it, it's more familiar um, and the process just becomes more refined. And so um, she's ready to start her uh, second cycle and she, like me, might decide to go to the website and download a version that she can save on her desktop and always save to the cloud so she doesn't lose her important work. So everyone will be at a slightly different cycle because it all depends on your renewal month. So you may be working with colleagues who are at different places in their CPL portfolio handbook, but by all means, share your goals with one another so that you can support yourselves and them in the learning, share resources and ideas, and it helps you feel less alone in the process when you can share your goals and um, how your process is coming along. This is a great slide. Um, it's got a lot of different um, activities that are highlighted on this slide and it is one I often refer people to when they ask the question of I'm not sure if I'm engaging in the right learning activities. Um, well first of all if you're engaging in a learning activity that supports your, your goal development and you um, 
achieving your goal, then it's the right learning activity for you. Um, there is a number of different ways that you can engage in ongoing learning and it's self-directed, so it means that you get to choose how you learn. Obviously, as a result of COVID-19, some learning activities may need to change. For example, one of my goals was to create and engage with a community of practice who was discussing similar things related to the sector that I was. We were learning from each other and meeting um, two to three times a week face to face before work. Um, when the pandemic hit, um, we quickly realized we wouldn't be able to meet face to face and came to the solution that we would meet before work as we always did. The consistency was really helpful and the ongoing learning was really helpful. We were supporting one another through this process and we meet by Zoom two to three times a week and engage in the same topics that we were discussing prior to the pandemic. We just don't get to see each other face to face temporarily. So that's just one example of ways that learning activities might change. But a lot of these that are highlighted on the screen can be done um, at home on your own. Um, you could be watching webinars or podcasts. You might have a community of practice similar to the one that I described that you're continuing to discuss practice topics with. Maybe you're engaging in a case study analysis and discussing various different topics with the community of practice on on a Zoom group or a different social media platform that works for you. You might be independently reading or journaling. Um, you may be engaging in mentorship. Mentorship might look differently right now in this current context, but you may be a mentor and still be able to find yourself in a mentor mentoring position uh, despite uh, physical distancing and the temporary pause that it has to our usual connections. So if you're ever wondering, am I engaging in the right learning activities? Refer to this page and ask yourself, is this, first of all, is the learning activity that I've chosen supporting my goal development? Um, and if it is, it's a learning activity that works for you. So just as the learning activities are creative, so is the documentation of your ongoing learning. Very often when we think of continuous professional learning, you might think of a professional workshop, um, a conference, or formal classes. And by all means, if those kinds of learning activities support your goals and you achieving them, then they're learning activities. But there's a number of different ways, as I just highlighted on the previous screen, that you can engage in ongoing learning. And that means that documentation will look differently too because if you watch a podcast or if you watch a pre-recorded webinar or if you read an article or engage in a discussion with a community of practice you're not necessarily getting a certificate so there's other ways that you're going to need to demonstrate that you're engaging in your ongoing learning so some of the examples are highlighted here and often this is referred to by members and is i'm told that it is a very helpful thing to reaffirm that they're doing it properly. You're documenting if you're showing us a list of publications or any online resources that you've read. Um, maybe you've got a summary of a study group discussion. Um, perhaps you have a certificate or a receipt or an agenda from a workshop or conference or course, and those could still be engaged in online currently. Maybe you've described a podcast or a webinar or you've got some slides or handouts from a presentation that you've attended or conducted yourself. Um, perhaps you're providing samples of your own work. Maybe you've written a parent newsletter or you've helped support a uh, workplace policy or a pamphlet or any other kind of report or article. Um, journaling and self-reflection is an activity and it's also a form of documentation and so is any research that you may have conducted. So outside of the typical certificate or receipt, there's a number of ways that you can demonstrate to the college that you are engaging in your ongoing learning. Um, for example, uh, my learning activity as I shared was a community of practice that is now gone online and we're engaging in rich discussions and we're supporting each other through the process of our ongoing learning in addition to the current context that we find ourselves in. 
um, through the process of these discussions, I get ideas about different resources to explore, or perhaps different professionals to reach out to or connect to or different events that are happening right now that are related to the sector. And all the notes that I generate um, from this study group are documentation that I'm engaging in that ongoing learning. So these are two great slides to refer to. These are posted on the website, but they're also in a handbook if you ever want to glance quickly and see if you're in the right direction. Here's a slide that talks a little bit about auditing. I want to reassure all members that auditing um, has been postponed due to COVID-19. If you received a letter that you were being audited by the college prior to the pandemic, do know that your documents are being processed. But at this time, we are sending no more auditing letters. Um, once we resume the process, the college will make that uh, very clear to you and we will communicate um, how auditing will look and when it will begin again. Just know that it is currently paused. The purpose of an audit is to monitor member compliance but it's also used to evaluate members' understanding of the program. If we're seeing some consistencies in sections of the portfolio cycle that may have presented challenges for some members, that allows us to develop additional resources that can support you in this process. So auditing is on pause. Stay tuned for communication from the college when it resumes once again. So here I wanna highlight um, some CPL um, examples and how they've been slightly altered as a result of COVID-19. So Claire has, a, as a result of the pandemic, decided that she's not able to start her portfolio cycle right now. Um, she's requested a hard copy, as I mentioned in an earlier slide, and she's gonna keep it in case things change. But right now she's not engaging in the ongoing learning as a result of uh, COVID-19 and the circumstances surrounding her and her family. Mark, who was beginning year two of his portfolio cycle, is gonna continue. He's found ways to change his planned activities to suit the current context, and he's now engaging in an online community of practice. He's listening to webinars, both live and pre-recorded, reading articles, eBooks, and podcasts. For Marianne, who's just started her first, second, her, her second cycle, um, she considered deferring when the pandemic hit, but she was inspired by our goals. Um, and she also is deeply connected to professionals in, in her um, area of practice who are working on their CPL. And together, they're finding ways to support each other with their ongoing learning through this pandemic. So she's considered, but then realized that it was doable for her this time. Know that if anything happened to any of these members, if Mark found himself in a situation where he was no longer able to continue, he has the one-time option to defer, as does Marion. If Claire changed her mind and decided to continue on with her continuous professional learning, that would work too. I referred to a chart a little bit earlier in this presentation and the college created this chart to support you in understanding the deferral process for COVID-19. So as you can see, it's highlighted in renewal months uh, specific to you. If you're an August member, you'll find the renewal month on the left-hand side and look at the options for August renewals. Have a look through the option to defer for CPL for your membership month and then look at questions around when would I re-engage if I continued to, if I decided to defer and when would I declare compliance with my CPL program requirements. So a lot of information on this chart that's why it's available on our website. Um, it's there to give you some examples about some possible options for members. It's two pages here. And we recognize that um, there are going to be different circumstances for different renewal months. So if you need information about the deferral process and how it specifically affects you and your renewal month, do refer to this chart. If you still have further questions, please contact the college so that we can support you with them.
In addition to that uh, CPL uh, chart to support you in understanding the deferral process as a result of COVID-19, if you choose to, there are also a number of different CPL resources that the college has created to support you in engaging in your ongoing learning. So you might have questions about what self-directed learning is, and there's a resource to support you in understanding that. Another resource that we realized members wanted support in was, what is a community of practice? What exactly does that look like? And how can I engage in mentoring? So there's resources that can support some of your questions around some of the learning activities. What I've found has been most helpful in speaking with members are the examples that we've created of CPL portfolio handbooks. The examples are great because there's differing lengths of service, there's differing lengths of experience, differing practice settings. So look through them. If you're, if you're struggling about where to begin with your handbook, have a look through the examples for inspiration and examples about how to get started. We've also got uh, a host of different webinars that can support you in understanding uh, CPL and some short videos as well. So do make use of what the college has to offer in terms of the CPL resources. The college also has a number of different resources that are related to practice. And all of these have been generated for engage, from engaging with you and learning from you about what it is that you would like to learn more about. So we've got a number of case studies, practice notes, which support you in understanding uh, topic in a very succinct way. The one that's highlighted on the screen right now is using social media, which is particularly useful at this time. Um, these resources could be used as learning activities in and of themselves. So if you've created a goal for yourself, that is to strengthen your understanding about engaging in um, professional practice in this new context we find ourselves in or in just social media in general, that practice note might serve as a really useful learning activity for you. The final um, practice guideline on the end is uh, one of our richest documents. They're the most lengthy. They've got, um, they really shine a light on a particular practice topic in great detail. So once again, if you were looking for ways to support children with disabilities in the practice setting that you work in, this practice resource as practice guideline could serve as a very valuable resource for you. Within it, there are links to internal resources as well as external resources, videos, case studies. So if you had a, um, a desire or a goal for yourself related to something that was written in a practice guideline, by all means use it. The college creates resources for you. They're free. You can download them. We're also here to answer any questions that you might have through the process of your CPL. So if you've read through the handbook and you've looked through the resources around CPL and the practice topics that, that we've presented to you today, please reach out to us. We're here to help you and here to support you in engaging in your ongoing learning. Um, be a part of the ECE community year round and you can do that in a number of ways. You can find our uh, email addresses on our website and you can also find us on Facebook. Very proud to say that we've just become a member of Facebook and we have a Facebook page. So if you'd like to go and find pertinent information related to the sector, you can find us there. In addition to Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the final icon represents our college talk blog. There we post regular information that is related to the sector, pertinent articles, and I'm excited to say that there's going to be some articles that will be coming, are coming out that are related to hearing from members and how they're practicing currently in this current context. So I want to thank you all for joining uh, today and behalf, on behalf of the college I would like to wish you and your families well at this time and I really look forward to continuing to engage with members know that we are, you can reach out to us at any time. Marina I'm going to pause that one. Don't use that last information in that last slide. I'm going to start again in a minute. Be a part of the ECE community 
all year round. Um, in addition to being able to reach us by email, you can find us on Facebook. We've just launched a face Facebook page and we're really excited about it. So please check us out there. You can also find us on Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and we also have a college talk blog where we regularly post uh, articles and blogs and we have some voices from the members who are currently finding themselves working in this context. So wishing you all well again on behalf of the college, stay safe 